Hi, let's quickly go over the rules for this. I'll be doing three easy from leak code, three medium, and then hard until the challenge ends. I have three lives, and every failed program, whether it's a compile error, wrong answer, runtime error, or anything else, will cost me a life. And I can't test my code at all, not even on the sample tests, so compile errors are very possible. And that's all. Let's start. All right, here we have the fourth page of the leak code easy. I'm just going to do the first three. Let's go. All right, first question. Construct string from binary tree. Given the root, construct a string, parentheses and integers, the preorder traversal way. Um, okay, and omit the useless things. Okay. So get rid of that, get rid of that, get rid of that. So basically every child that doesn't matter is omitted. And for this one, the left child, even though it's empty, we need that parens because this is the right. Okay. All right, this looks fun. Um, private. Actually, let's see. Okay, so we want, we want, let's see. We want to return Okay, so whatever this node is, node one is there. So if how do we how do we do this like cleanly? So string r is equal to two string root val. So if we have so if right is not equal to no pointer. Then we need both. If root is equal to null pointer, return the empty string. So if right is not equal to null pointer, then we need both parens. So r plus equals tree two star root left. Um, that. We do the same thing for right. Else if left is not equal to null pointer. Then that means right is equal to null pointer and left is not, meaning that. Okay, well, let's check this. So we run it on root, root will be one. So if root is null pointer, do that. If this matters, Okay, so one. Then here, right is not equal to no pointer. So we do left and we do right. So this will work. And then here, left is not equal to no pointer. So this will return that. Okay, I can't test on samples. So this is the best I can do. I think we're fine. Let's just see. Wrong answer. Damn, on the first one, really. Okay, well, that's fun. Wait, it fails the first sample? If right is not equal to no pointer. That is such a dumb mistake. Oh my god. Okay, well, we're off to a great start already. Um, <laughs> awesome. <laughs> great. I don't, I don't, what, why did that, why did they even compile? I don't know why that compiled. What would left and right even be? Are those like STL names or something? Okay, now we gotta really... God, okay, this is going great so far. We gotta really scour everything. How did this compile? Okay, whatever. So, I think that's it. I think everything else is fine. Let's try it again. Okay, off to a bad start, but... Who says we can't recover? We still have two easies left. This is sequel. Let's skip that one. Okay, merge two binary trees. When you're given two binary trees. Imagine that when you put one of them to cover the other, some nodes of the two trees are overlapped. You need to merge the two trees into a new one. If two nodes overlap, then sum node values up as the new value of the merge node. Otherwise, the not null node will be used so what we need to do is, if 
root one is equal to null pointer. And root two is equal to null pointer. Then return null pointer. If, okay, so now that handles that case. So now what we need to do is int left val is equal to root one. So if root one is not equal to null pointer, then root one value, otherwise it's zero. Same thing for this, except root two. Doing copy paste is dangerous, but I trust. No wait. Okay, yeah. So root one value is, if root one is not equal to null pointer, then it's the value, otherwise zero. Um, cur is equal to new tree node, r1 val plus r2 val. Um, okay, so we, yeah. Ideally, we don't need to like actually use the node, right? Uh, okay, so again, if this is null pointer, do nothing. If this is, if both are null pointer, do nothing. Otherwise, at least one is not null pointer. So we return this. We return. We we get the two values, and then we try. So then cur left is equal to merge trees. Oh boy, this is a pain, isn't it? Uh, tree node R1 left is equal to root one, not equal to null pointer. So if root one is null pointer already, then, then this is pointless. So if root one is not equal to null pointer, then we do root one left, null pointer. Do the same thing here, right now. R2 left, that's root two and root two. Then cur left is equal to merge trees. R1 left, R2 left. Okay, now we copy paste this very, very carefully. So we look through everything. R1 right. So this is root 1. This should be right. This should be R2 right. This should be root 2. This should be root 2 right. Again, this is if not equal null pointer, return that. Otherwise, null pointer. So it doesn't matter. Then we merge R1 right. R2 right. Okay, so we are merging two trees. If both are null pointer, return null pointer. Um, we get the value. So if either of them have a value and one of them must, then okay. So not equal no pointer. If it's not equal to no pointer, it's the value. Do the same thing here. Then this is a new tree node with the value as that. Now, if, so since at least one of them is not no pointer, something must happen. So if root one is not equal to no pointer, then we get the left child. This is root one, this is root two, this is root one, this is root two. This is right, right, left, left. Then null pointer. So we merge trees with those. And if both of them are null pointer, then this will be null pointer as expected, which is fine. If there's at least one child, this will return that child. And then we do the same thing for right. Well, I have no idea. But it's worth a shot, right? It's always worth a shot. So do we just try? Two nodes overlap, some nodes up. Okay, we ready? No, no, this is iffy. But okay, let's go. Damn. Okay, this is harder than it seems. Um. One, three, two, five. So this is the first sample. And what's happening is three, five. Why? Oh my God. Dude, the amount of times. I, I, I specifically said this was gonna happen and then I did not check it. 
And I specifically said there was gonna be an issue with this and then I didn't check it. So that's great. That's awesome. Um, okay. So we have one easy left. SQL. Okay. I should have done algorithms, but I regret not doing algorithms. Find three numbers whose product is maximum. Return the maximum product. Oh boy. Okay. So this is fun because negatives. Um, but what we can do is we can. You now it's got to involve. If we sort the list, then it's like the three smallest numbers and the three largest numbers. So that's a thing we can do. So sort nums.begin, nums.end. You know, we only have one attempt left, but I think we can clutch this. I think this is possible. So sort nums, then what are we going to do? Vector int cur. Um, cur dot pushback. So int take is equal to minimum of three and int nums.size minus three. Be careful about this. So we cast nums.size to an int and then, oh wait, no, this is, this, we can do this better. Okay, four int i equals zero, i is less than three, i plus plus, nums.push, Back now, cur dot push back. Back nums dot back. Nums dot pop back. Okay, now so now int take is equal to min. No, let's let's not even bother with min. So for int i equals zero, i is less than three, and i is less than nums dot size, i plus plus dot push back nums i. This is so the reason we do this is to make sure there are no duplicates because if we push four twice then that's a problem. So we push the back elements of nums, then we push the front elements of nums. Now int best is equal to negative two and nine. Four int i equals zero i is less than cur dot size i plus plus j equals i plus one, j is less than cur dot size, j plus plus, for int k is equal to j plus one, k is less than cur dot size, k plus plus, best equal to max, best, nums i, now cur, cur i times cur j times cur k. Term best. Okay, so sort nums, that should be fine. Cur. So for each element, for the last three elements of cur of nums, push back that element of nums and then pop back. Now for this, i is less than three and i is less than nums.size, i plus plus. So the first three elements or the first elements of nums, push them into cur. Now for each thing, for i equals zero, i is less than cur dot size, i plus plus, j equals i plus one, j, j, k, j plus one, k, k, cur i times cur j times cur k. I think that's it. Negative two e nine is small. Yes, let's go, nice, nice. Okay, we're through with easy. All right, this is page four of medium. Here we go, one life left, can we clutch? Oh God. Okay. Um, an ugly number is a positive integer whose prime factors are limited to two, three, and five. The nth ugly number. So this shouldn't be that bad. Can we brute force? Because like, there should be a lot of ugly numbers, right? Like two to the, how do we, how do we approximate this? Like two to the something. 
like seven cubed. It's 343. Um, let's do nine cubed. Uh, 12 cubed. Okay, so two to the 12. Actually, this may be a problem. Okay, wait, that is that is a problem. No, wait, two to the 11th. And like, there are better, there's better than that, but at the same time, I don't know. Give an integer n, return the nth ugly number. So we know it's an int. In fact, this is probably the best thing that's an int. So that's a pain. Okay, what we can do is, so two to the 32, two to the 31. Okay, this is dangerous, but what we can do is vector int v for int i is equal to zero, i is less than or equal to, so 2 to the 31 is what we want, i plus plus, 3 to the 10th. 20, 19, we'll never use 3 to the 20. So actually 2 to the 30th is fine, um, right? Yeah, we'll never use 2 to the 31 because we know it'll fit in an int. So 4 int j is equal to 0, j, uh, what do we need, what do we need? Um, 3 to the 19th, right? So yeah. Okay, so up to 19th, j plus plus, 4 into k, k, k is less than equal to 5 to the 12th, 13th, okay, 13th, k plus plus, long, long, cur is equal to 1, i x plus plus, Cur times equals times equals two. If cur is greater than uh, what? So one ll shifted by two to the thirty one. Right. Greater than or equal to one ll shifted by thirty one. Break. Um, okay. Okay, we gotta be really careful about copy-paste errors again. So for x equals zero, x less than j this time, then go to three. x equals zero, x less than k, multiply by five. Then, so if cur is ever greater than or equal to the int limit, do that. Otherwise, v dot push back int cur. Okay, this is stressful. So I have to 30. So again, two to the 30th is the power we need. Three to the 19th is the power we need and 5 to the 13th is the power we need. Wait, right? Yeah. Okay, so do that. Now, cur equals 1 for x equals 0, x less than i, x plus plus. Cur times equals 2. If cur is ever greater than this, break. 1 allowed to 31 is the integer limit. If cur is greater than this, continue. For x equals 0, x less than j, x plus plus, cur times equals 3. If cur is greater than or equal to that, break. Again, this is long, long, so this won't overflow. Then if this is ever greater, continue. x equals 0, x less than k, x plus plus, cur times equals 5. Same thing. Then v dot push back, int cur. Okay, so now we simply sort and return. Return v n minus one. Okay. I believe. Come on, come on, come on. Yes, nice, nice, nice. 
<sighs> okay, we can actually clutch this out. Uh, maybe. Might be able to clutch this out. Okay. Giving the Raven a citations, where citations eyes, and the number of citations the researcher received for their eyes paper. Return compute the researcher's H index. According to the definition, scientists have an index H if H of their end papers have at least H citations each. The other N H papers have no more than H citations each. There are several possible values for H. The minimum, maximum one is taken. Okay. So N is up to 5,000. Citation size up to 1,000. Um, can brute force this? Is probably the simplest way. Because uh, citations I... If we go up to, for example, 1,001, then that's just definitely not possible because it must have at least h. So, for int x is equal to 1000, x is greater than or equal to zero, x minus minus. Okay, so, yeah, minus h papers had no more. Okay, this is a bit messy. So, a scientist has an index h if h of their end papers have at least h citations each. So let's iterate over h instead of x, this makes more sense. So for int x citations, if x is greater than or equal to h, then if x if x is greater than or equal to h, then plus plus count call it greater than or equal. Okay, so h of their end papers have at least h and the other n minus h have no more than h so what that means is the other m the other n minus h i think i understand this right so if h of their end papers have at least h citations each so count GEQ must be at least H. So there must be at least H papers that have at least H citations. And the other N minus H papers have no more than H citations each. So that means that there cannot be more than H papers with, there cannot be more than H papers with more than H citations. Because if so, then at least one of these other N minus H must be forced to have more than h citations. But if count g is less than or equal to h, then each of these greater things can be part of these h, h papers. And of course, count g e q must be greater than or equal to h. So if count g e q is greater than or equal to h, and count g is less than or equal to h, return h. Now, what happens if there's zero valid h index? <clears throat> what are you supposed to do if there's none? Wait, what are you supposed to do if there's none? I can't, I can't test that. Is, is there, is it possible for there to be none? One, two, wait, no, it shouldn't be, right? Because h is like a u function, kind of, like an upside down u function. So there's gotta be like something, something that's possible, right? Something that's possible. But is there always something that's possible? Um, that begs the question. So sorted array, well, there's no option for not. So there must be something that's valid. That's the only explanation. There must be something that's valid. But why? Because, like, if... I guess there just has to be, right? I think there has to be. Yeah, there has to be a valid one. I can't, I can't prove it formally, but I believe. So, first things first. It's always... A thousand is always safe to iterate through. 1,000 is always safe to iterate through, because if it's 1,001, then count GQ will just straight up be zero. 
and therefore it's not possible. So count GEQ is greater than or equal to H. It means that we must have at least H of those papers having H citations, and there must be not, okay. Yeah, I think it's good, I think it's good. Um, GEQ, if X is greater than or equal to, yep, if X is greater, yep. I think it's good. Okay, so stressful, unbelievably stressful. Let's submit. Come on. Compile. Oh, that's such a dumb way to lose it. Oh, that's so dumb. Because if we just, if we just, if we just put something outside, if we just put something outside, then it works, right? If we just put something outside, then it works. Okay. Oh, that's so dumb. Okay, well, video over, I guess.